We did deal with some case studies that uh, they have done, some scientific efforts to try to answer these questions as to whether or not a person is born gay uh, and uh, dealing with genetics and the biological basis for sexual orientation and of course we covered um, the studies, the brain structure, the possible hormonal influences that they've delved into, the concordance of homosexuality in twins that they They've uh, investigated and the concordance of genetic markers in siblings, which is the study of whether or not a person has a gene or if there is in fact a homosexual gene that people uh, would have that uh, predisposes them to be homosexual. And of course, all of these studies have come out inconclusive, uh, and a lot of these studies that they've done were flawed, and they just do not or cannot answer the question as to what is the problem with this type of orientation or behavior. And of course, um, the Bible is true when it says that it is not in man to direct his own steps. Man cannot solve his own problems. He can't solve his own problems because he, in fact, is the problem. If we say amen, you know, and of course, he does not recognize or don't understand the fact that he is the problem. Man does not recognize that he is depraved and that he is contrary to God. And so as we look and explore this subject, and I think these questions uh, can be answered and are answered uh, in the Bible by God, uh, and I think that these issues are very important for us to talk about in our churches, even though that um, quite a few of those in the, uh, in the world of church and ministry uh, are not really dealing with these issues, um, particularly from a biblical perspective. Now, the reason why this is important is because I think that we should understand and know what God's perspective is on it. And that only what God's perspective is, is the only thing that really matters. That it is not left up to us to decide what is right and wrong. God has determined what is right and what is wrong. It's not left, us, left up to us to decide what's good or bad. God has determined what is good and what is bad. Now, there are those among our brethren that are talking about um, pastors accepting transgendered people and marrying transgendered people uh, in our churches. If you know what a, don't know what a transgendered person is, it's a person that says that they are female in a male body. And so some of our brethren have accepted the um, idea that people are born this way, even though that there's no scientific proof throughout all the studies that they've done and the examination of brain structure and genetics and biological uh, 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 the chemistry of the body and the studies of, 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 of brains and, and people and, and scenarios and all these kinds of things, the epidemiologists have concluded that they don't know that there is no scientific evidence. But some have taken up the opinion of deciding for themselves and say that um, we need to accept this behavior. Now again, we do not hate anybody. We do not promote hate. Can we say amen? amen. You know, we don't hate anybody. It's the sin that is to be hated. And of course, um, they're trying to say that uh, even though that an individual may outwardly look like a man, 
but that it is actually a woman inside and so it's okay to have uh, one looking like a man uh, at the altar and another one saying that he is a man because in fact you're not marrying what you're seeing you're marrying what you don't see that the man is really a woman and the man is whatever he's supposed to be we <laughs> say man and see this is this is not uh, not the way it's supposed to be but it goes to show you just how the enemy is trying to destroy God's church now this country was founded upon what is called Judeo-Christian values Judeo comes from the word Jewish and the Judeo-Christian value has to do with the common moral ethics that Jews and Christians stand for. And when the original 13 colonies were formed in what was called America, as we know it is today, was predominantly Puritan in their beliefs. And the Puritans were some of the first people that God began to pour out the baptism of the Holy Ghost for the first time since the days of the apostles. And the Puritans were very religious people and they followed the Bible literally. And of course they did not have much revelation of truth as we have today because they followed the principles of Jesus uh, to a T. For example, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, an arm for an arm, a leg for a leg. Um, those type of things. It was among the Puritans back in those days that were morally and ethically uh, biblically sound and followed the moral ethics of conduct that the Bible specified we, uh, we were to follow. That's what this country was based upon. And that's why you find the Judeo-Christian uh, values that Jews and Christians share and agree on alike particularly the Ten Commandments and that's why you see the Ten Commandments in our halls of justices because this is an example of this country being founded and believing in Judeo-Christian values. Now when we talk about Judeo-Christian values, we're talking about values, morals, and ethics that are biblically sound. Behaving and treating one another based upon what is right as the Bible dictates. And see, that's what this country was founded on. It was founded upon those principles. How am I to treat my fellow man? What is my attitude should be toward governorship or rulership or authority? They based these principles and moral and morals and ethics as they understood it from the Bible. And that's why this country was called a Christian nation for so long. And that's why the laws that we have and the freedoms that we have in this country, we have them because the country was originally formed to be a moral, ethical type country as it is influenced by the moral ethics of the Bible. You understand what we're saying? Now, as the country grew and becomes bigger and bigger, it's now become more and more secular. The country has now become in a condition where people are challenging the moral code and the ethical conduct code of what the Bible is saying. And this is why people want to get away from all type of anything that has to do with the Bible. They want it out of our society. They want it out of our schools. They don't want our children to be subjected to it. That's why they don't want prayers in schools and all these type of things. But this is what this country was founded upon. This has been the success of this country. And this is why this country is failing right now. Because this country has alienated God and those
those that are uh, evil and wicked or those that do not want to abide by the moral ethics and behavior that the Bible says we should abide by even though that this country started in that fashion they want to have the freedom to do whatever their desires or pleasures dictate for them to do and that's the mess that we're in and that's why it's important for us to speak out concerning these issues because the Supreme Court now is has to decide what is right and even the Constitution of the United States of America was written and influenced by the Judeo-Christian values or influenced by what the Bible says on how we are to treat one another and how we are to behave now those that are against Judeo-Christian values understand that the Constitution reflects Judeo-Christian values so what do they want to do now they want the Constitution rewritten they want to challenge and say that the Constitution is not really saying what you all said it had been saying all along you follow what we're saying you know and that's what we're dealing with today you know so the world has become more and more demon possessed because Satan is the God of what this world he's God of this world you know you can be on your job and somebody can have a radio playing radio of a secular station and then you can come in the next day and be the first one there and change the channel and put it on a film life radio and people immediately will get upset there used to be a radio program uh, when I was working in Jackson called the Bob and Tom show and the Bob and Tom show had some of the most filthiest vulgar nasty outrageous talk and jokes on there that was just highly offensive and distasteful and that's what the CEOs like to listen to and I remember one time I changed the channel and put it on well I had my own radio and I had my radio and I put it over there where I was sitting and had it real low to where I was the only one that could hear it and I remember Bishop Bonner was coming on WMUZ 103.5 uh, uh, FM and so I would get him and I would listen to it and I would look over and see the officers being so red faced gritting their teeth just so angry because there might be a possibility that they could hear a little snippet of what I was playing what's the problem it's the world is demon possessed that's what the problem is and so when you see these individuals marching down the street gay rights parading down the street dressed up in their costumes looking all flamboyant and extravagant and all these type of things you know uh, that's not Judeo-Christian when you see things like that you are looking at the vileness of the human nature because that's where all these things come from can we say amen all right so as we are uh, we left off in the seventh chapter of Romans the homosexuality and all kinds of immorality and sins and behaviors that you see people exhibit on a consistent basis is all a reflection of the fallen nature that we obtained from Adam and there's a scripture that we quoted to you early earlier that a man is born into trouble as the sparks fly upward when he is born he's already in trouble can we say amen hadn't even done anything just came into the world and he's in trouble already have you ever walked in a room and people look at you and you were in trouble you was like what did I do I just came in the room I'm in trouble already 
Well, it was something that you did last week, last year. Last year, about this time, you did it. Well, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, born into trouble already. Romans chapter number 7. Now, as we told you, some like to try to say that Paul was talking about himself as a saint. Because you have those that believe once saved, always saved, and that salvation has nothing to do with your behavior. Because if it was based upon your behavior, it would be based upon works. And we're not saved by works, we're saved by grace. Oh, they just have it all mixed up. You know, the scripture says you are saved by grace through faith and not of works. It is the gift of God. The scripture in Galatians, the scripture people use to say you don't have to be baptized because to say if you have to be baptized, that's works. And the Bible says we're not saved by works. The works he was talking about, he was talking about the churches in Galatia who have backslid and went back under the law. He was talking about the works of the law. He wasn't talking about getting baptized. That ain't no work. We say, man, you know, you do more work taking a bath than getting baptized. You got your bubbles there and you got your little duckies there or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. You know. But that's just how they twist the scripture. Being, uh, getting baptized is not works. That's your confession that you are a sinner. That's what baptism is. But you see, people got their own ideas as to what the Bible means. And they got their own opinions. Oh, people's opinions are very important to them to the point that they want you to accept them. And if you don't, something's wrong with you because you won't accept their opinion. Who died and made you Osama or Obama or God? But that's how people, that's the arrogance of the human nature. That's the arrogance of the fallen nature. How dare you disagree with me? You know, well... It